Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship today. I'm glad that you're here with us. Whether you're here in person or if you're watching us online, what a blessing it is to be able to be together and know that Jesus is in our midst. He comes to us in his word and he promises to always be by our side. And, and that's a good news that we share today and every day uh, as his people, as We'll talk about later the body of Christ, the church today. Our order of worship is outlined in your worship folder. We'll be following that this morning. Uh, but before we start, let's stand up and say good morning to one another. God bless you for being here today. Good morning. Good morning. You look better today. I can feel better. I'll be glad when I get to this fine session. Yeah. I neglected to mention earlier, if you're watching us online at home today, I hope that you'll sign in or comment on the feed so that we might know that you're with us and celebrate uh, God's love for you as well as for us. Uh, in the meantime, we will begin our worship service today by, of course, calling upon God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Uh, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But, but if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought or word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you nor the Lord. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We trust you deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news that Jesus gives to you and to me today as well, because we are his children. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you. 
and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to begin or continue our service by singing our first hymn today, Hark the Glad Sound. Stretch forth the hand of your majesty to heal and defend us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We'll continue our worship by hearing God's word in the scripture lessons chosen for today. first lesson for today is taken from Nehemiah, the 8th chapter, beginning at the first verse. All the people gathered as one man into the square before the water gate, and they told Ezra, the scribe, to bring the book of the law of Moses, the law of Moses, that the Lord had commanded Israel. So Ezra, the priest, brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who, do that, who could understand what they heard on the first day of the seventh month. And he read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of the people, for he was above all the people. And as he opened it, all the people stood. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. They read from the book, from the law of God, clearly, and they gave the sense, so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites, who taught the people, said to all the people, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people wept as they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet wine, and send portions to anyone who has nothing ready. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The epistle lesson for today from 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, beginning at the 12th verse. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews and Greeks, slaves and free, all, and all were made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would, be, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor. And our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administrating, and various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret, but earnestly desire the higher gifts? And I will show you a still more excellent way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand and join in the Hallelujah and verse. The Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 4. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of him and marveled at the gracious words that were coming from his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said to them, Doubtless, you will quote to me this proverb, Physician, heal yourself. What we have heard you did in Capernaum, do here in your hometown as well. And he said, Truly I say to you, no prophet is acceptable in his hometown. <clears throat> but in, in truth, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, 
and a great famine came over the land. And Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman, the Syrian. When they heard these things, all in the synagogues were filled with wrath. And they rose up and drove him out of the town and brought him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they could throw him down the cliff. But passing through their midst, he went away. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. Let's join together in singing our next hymn, O Christ, True and Only Light. <clears throat> to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Bible passage that this morning's message is based on is the New Testament lesson. It's Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Let me read just the opening verses to you again. Paul writes, for just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greek, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. This is the word of the Lord. You know, I've told you before, and you've heard me talk about it, Linda and I like movies. Uh, and we, we always look forward to seeing the movies that come out. But sometimes it seems that there's only two kind of movies anymore, right? They're the horror or scary movies, which I don't like because I'm a chicken. And then there's the superhero movies. We, people love the superhero movies. There are all kinds of superheroes, by the way, with all kinds of power. But there's really one thing that most superheroes have in common. They, they kind of work by themselves. 
They save the world by themselves. Some of them have sidekicks. At least they did in the old days, like Batman and Robin or the Lone Ranger and Tonto. But the reality is most superheroes are like Mr. Incredible, who says to Buddy, go home, Buddy, I work alone. Maybe we like that idea. Because, you know, you and me, we can feel kind of helpless at times, like we can't do anything by ourselves. Maybe you and me, we seem to spend more time, or used to at least, in meetings, talking to other people about coming to an idea of what we can do. We like the idea of the one person who goes forth and who can change the world all by themselves. Maybe, and I think this is at the heart of the movies, right? We like to imagine in one way or another that we can be superheroes, changing everything by ourselves. But then, then we leave the theater. We come back to the world and we realize we're not Lone Rangers after all. And so we try to find places in our lives where we can take charge. With our families, when I say to Linda, Bring me my supper now. <laughs> yeah, that's her reaction to that, too. And sometimes in our faith, we like to think that we're superheroes, that we can do it all by ourselves, that we're lone rangers. Maybe it's because we think our way is the right way. All the other people, they don't understand, but if you do it my way, Maybe we buy into that old saying, if you want the job done right, do it yourself. You know, it doesn't work in the church either. And it doesn't work in the church not because other people don't get it. It doesn't work in the church because that's not the way God designed the church to work. Now we're finally getting around to what Paul says in the, his letter to the Corinthians, the, the church... Is the body of Christ. And it's not made up of lone rangers, but it's made up of Christians in communities. Uh, a lone ranger Christian is a, a contradiction in terms. I, if I think all the way back to high school, they call that an oxymoron. But this isn't the way that God designed the church. He designed us to be a body, to be his body. And the trouble is, you and I, we like to think that our way is the only way. That what we want is the most important thing in Christ. But God tells us, he reminds us that we're not alone in this. We're part of something bigger than ourselves. You know, the Spirit brings us together. It brings us together in salvation in the body of Christ. We're baptized not into a, a one a lone ranger relationship with God, but we're baptized into a community. In fact, the old Latin word for baptism is incorporation. Uh, we're incorporated. We're brought into the body. We're not baptized to stand alone, but we're baptized to stand in the body of Christ, to be brothers and sisters, to be one among many who make up this body of Christ. And Paul says it's like our physical body. We can take for granted all the different pieces that are in our body, but if something's not working, it affects the whole body. We heard all fall long about Aaron Rodgers' little toe. We even saw it on camera. It's just his little toe. How could that affect the whole game? And yet, we saw that it did. That one little bone affected uh, everything that he did. And it's the way it is with, with us and the body of Christ, too. We need to all be together, to all be working with one another. Uh, we can't work if some are left out. And that's because though we are different from one another, 
Though we're different as members of Christ, we need each other's gifts to work as God's people together. Just as the human body needs all its pieces to work as one. We can't go alone as Lone Ranger Christians because we need one another for the church to function healthily, to function properly, to function fully. Everybody connected together and the head of the church, Jesus Christ, sustaining and empowering his people through his sacraments. Paul has this whole nice little story and illustration of the body of Christ. And we're wondering, what does that mean for us today? It's this. See, this is important. This is the way that God is working. This gathering together, this caring about one another, this serving together as brothers and sisters. It's not just so we can afford a nice place. It's not just so that we can meet our bills. It's because this is how God chooses to work among his people and to work in the world today, to reach out not only to us, but to those who don't know him yet, to those who don't know his love and his care and forgiveness. The head of the church, Jesus Christ, is working here today in his word. He's working in your midst through those who are sitting alongside of you or in front of you or behind you. He's working through the internet for those of you who are at home and following along online. He's reaching out to you so that you might know his love and his care in your life as well. And it's when we're serving with one another, when we're suffering with those who are suffering in our midst, rejoicing with those who are celebrating in our midst, loving and forgiving and caring for one another, sharing in happiness and honor and sadness and in despair, that we are reflecting the power and the love of God that he gives to you and to me. Church, worship, our being together as a, a unified community. It's not something that's dreamed up by us. It's a plan of God because here he can multiply his gifts, multiply his work, multiply his love so that we can absorb more and more, so that we can reflect more and more so that we can share more and more with those who are all around us. God has called us to be and to live in community as the body of Christ together. There's a story from the Olympics in 1972, and there was a Russian weightlifter. He ended up winning the gold medal in his class. He was a heavyweight, and he lifted this enormous barbell filled with weights. And then he, he leaves the stage, you know, they drop it just to show you how big it is, I think. And he leaves the stage and they had six Mounties, Royal Canadian Mounted Police come up. And their job is to what? Move the barbell for the next guy because he's got his own pre-set up and, and going. But there's a problem because see, all six of them together couldn't lift what the one man had just lifted. It wasn't because they didn't have enough strength. It wasn't because the one man was, was stronger than six good, healthy Mounties, but it's because they don't work quite together the way one man does. It's, a, it's an illustration in the story of the church. We're called to, to be together, that, that we can do as one body more than we can do individually, each going our own way. It's how God multiplies his gifts and talents that he gives to you and to me. When we are serving together, when we are serving with one another, when we're learning, when we're loving, when we're forgiving as a body of Christ, God is at work accomplishing more than we can do on our own. 
Are we trying to be Lone Ranger Christians? Are we trying to, to be on our own, to think it's my business and nobody else's? If so, God calls us back. He calls us not to an American model or to a, a Jewish model, but to his model. To be a community, a body of Christ, to have firm connections to one another. Because there, he says, there you'll receive all my blessings. There you'll be surrounded by my love and forgiveness. There you'll see again that I am in your midst. The Jewish people under Moses are called to leave Egypt. And they, they go out in the Exodus. And as they're camping in the wilderness, God gives them a street plan. Don't just set up your tents willy-nilly or randomly, but do it in this way. Why does he get into such detail? Because his plan has God and the tabernacle at the center and everybody else gathered around facing him. And you know what? That's still God's plan for you and for me. We're not just off on our own streets, in our own little cul-de-sacs, in our own little micro-communities, but he calls us to be together with him in our midst and in word and in sacrament he strengthens us he blesses us he unites us and he gives us reasons to rejoice and to know that he is always with us a hope for the future a picture of heaven to come you are, Paul says, one body, the body of Christ. We're tied together. We're united as his family. We're committed to one another. It's not my plan. It's not your plan. It's God's plan. And there he leads us in his grace and by his spirit. May we always reflect that love that he has given to us. Amen. May the peace of Christ that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Having heard God's word, we respond by confessing our faith in the Apostles' Creed. Would you stand if you're able? Join with me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. For then he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. While we're standing, we continue by bringing our calls, our petitions to God uh, in, in our prayers. In your worship folder, you've received uh, the prayer list so that you can pull this out and keep this uh, by your side so that you may remember these prayers in the time to come. Um, I've two additions to make to it, uh, both for families of those who passed away this week. So we pray for the family of Sam, friend of Walter Krauss, who died this past week. And we pray for the family of Lou Paler, the brother of Lance, who God also called home this week. Let us pray to the Lord. <clears throat> Dear Lord Jesus, we confess at times we want to be Lone Ranger Christians. 
We want to do everything by ourselves because we figure that's the only way it's going to get done right. We don't want to be uh, bothered by other people's messes or confusions or even worse, their hurts and pains. We, we justify this as self-reliance. It's a servant attitude, but really it's a selfish desire to be in control and to have things done our way. For this, our desire to be seen as superheroes, forgive us, O oh Lord. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. remind us again today, by your Holy Spirit, that we have been brought into the body of Christ, that in our baptism, we've been made not to stand alone, but to be brothers and sisters with all who are believers around us. Although we are different from one another, we need one another. And you have provided your gifts to all of us to work and join together. Help us to serve together, to, to suffer together, to share together, to celebrate in honor and happiness the suffering, hurt, and pain, to work and serve and love and care. By your Spirit, make us truly the body of Christ in our congregation and in our world today. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. O God of love, deliver the sick from their illnesses, give relief to the suffering, help the trouble to know peace of mind and be with the grieving and those in their final days. Give patience to those who must bear with their own infirmities or disabilities. And we pray that you would hear us specifically for those who are on our minds and in our lives. Be with Kathy, Brian, Bill, Mary, Michael, James, Larry, Ron, Danielle, Ray, Isaac, Harold, Amber. Be with Andrew and Latonia, with Matt and Steve, with Ron, Barbara, Jean, and Noah. Be with Dick and Dave, with William and Allison, with Robin and Lance and Ronald and Mike. Be with all that we name before you in our own hearts and minds, even right now. Dear Lord, you know their needs, their worries, their fears, their illnesses. We ask that you would be with them. Pour out upon them health and healing, strength and recovery. But above all, remind them of your love. Assure them of your presence. And give them confidence to know that you are always by their side. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, merciful Father, your thoughts are not our thoughts and your ways are not our ways. And we pray for the people suffering from disasters and catastrophes. For those hurt by tornadoes and recovering from tornadoes and windstorms. And for those who've been affected by the winter storms that have blown through our country. Or, or those who were kept in their car for long periods of time. Lord, we ask that you would be with them. Uh, keep them safe from despair and don't let their faith fail them. Deliver any who are still in danger and bring hope and healing so that they may find relief and restoration. Most of all, assure them of your presence and love and give them hope and safety. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, deal graciously with all those who mourn. Be with the families of Sam and Lou and all who are hurting now. Pour out your spirit upon them and remind them that they're not alone, but that you are by them side. And give them the ability in casting every care on you, they may know the consolation of your love. And the assurance of your promise that all those who die in the faith you will draw to be with you and give us the knowledge that when our time is come when when we are called away from this earthly place in faith you will call us to rejoin all those we love who have departed in the faith standing in your presence lord in your mercy Amen. 
Hear us, O Lord, and give answer to the prayers of your people, prayed in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. O with the Father and the Spirit, you are one God and one Lord forevermore. Amen. And hear us as we pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And receive the blessing that God gives to you today and every day as his people. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let's continue together by singing our last hymn together. Love in Christ is strong and living. it is to be together as a family of God and know that we are not alone. We don't have to be Lone Rangers, but God has made us a part of a family, a body, uh, and he's given us love through those who are around us as well. I'm glad that you're here today. I'm glad if you joined us online that you were with us today as well. Um, before I let you go, I have a couple of things to remind you about. First of all, we want to celebrate with those who are celebrating. Walter's got his birthday this year. He said, look, I'm all alone here. And I said, that's because you're special. So let's uh, congratulate and give our blessings to Walter. Um, our Bible studies begin again this week. So you're invited to join us for that. On Tuesday morning, the women's Bible class meets in the choir room, uh, and there early on, I don't know if they're starting this week or did you start last week, but they're at the beginning of a new Bible study that you're welcome to join in. You won't have missed anything. Uh, be a part of that. That's at uh, 10 o'clock? 10 o'clock, there you go, 10 a.m. Uh, on Wednesday, our Wednesday morning Bible class begins again. We've been on kind of a hiatus for several reasons, but we start again this Wednesday morning at 10.30. Remember, this one's online. It's on Zoom. You'll get an email tomorrow with the link. It's the same one as always in case you still have that. And we're continuing our Bible study in the book of Psalms. And so join us Wednesday for Psalms. And then, of course, next Sunday, our Sunday morning Bible class continues here in the sanctuary and online on Facebook. You can join us at either place. And we're continuing the story of Esther 
from the Old Testament book of Esther. It's getting to the good part now. So uh, join us for that. That's at 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings. Um, going on this week, we have the community center meeting on Tuesday afternoon. Um, we have the sign up for volunteers. We need help for sign ups. Uh, we don't have any ushers. I know for next Sunday, uh, we need somebody to help out with the camera next week and in the weeks to come. There's lots to sign up out there. It's on the blue table in the entryway. And by the way, there's a new sheet out there uh, already. We're starting to look forward to our Lenten soup suppers. Uh, they're still a month away. They start at the beginning of March. Uh, but if you'd like to sign up to provide a soup or provide some of the side dishes, uh, that's out there on the blue table as well. I urge you, if you talk to me at Advent, so we're moving the time of the suppers to 6 PM. Remember, church is at 7 o'clock. Now we'll start eating together at 6 p.m. Uh, so plan that in your calendar or in your mind, uh, whether you sign up or whether you come like I do just to eat and to reap the benefits of the family, of the body. Okay? Um, our offering envelope, or I'm sorry, offering statements for 2021, if you would like those, they are already in your family folders out in the entryway, so check on that if you're looking for those. A little free pantry, it continues to be used and needed in our community. We, we need real, we can use anything, but especially this week, it seems we need pasta, rices, canned fruits or canned soups, um, those kind of meals, uh, bring them in because they get taken out to our little free pantry and the community, the people who don't have enough to eat, they, they come and they take and it's God at work in our midst and through us. Okay, did I miss anything that anybody needs to share? Okay, thank you very much for coming. Stay for our coffee fellowship time and, and sharing together and go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. Yeah. Oh, you know, they decided not to show up again. Huh?